So yeah, so I've been offered this contract and I'm gonna have a chat to Michelle. Okay. All right, let's see if it's actually something that's that we should be pursuing or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be leaving GoFly. Job done, mate. Um, I'll recommend you, but yeah, sooner rather than later. Jackson, the pilot, is back in town. Mate, that was well done. Every year, thousands of students across the country begin their flight training. Whether it's overcoming fear, a career in aviation, or the enjoyment of flying, students start by enrolling in flight school. On the Sunshine Coast, GoFly Aviation, operated by Damien Wills and his team of instructors, work hard, have fun, and teach everyday people to fulfil their dream of taking flight. Every pilot looks forward to their first solo. Today, Stephen is heading up to Caloundra to have his first solo check with Damien, the chief flight instructor. Well, it's a good day to fly solo. <laughs> if he's assessed as being safe, Damien will instruct him to fly one solo circuit. However, the weather isn't looking good. So driving up here this morning, there was a lot of fog around because it just the wind seems to be coming from the southeast at the moment, which is bringing a lot of moisture in from the Pumicestone Passage. So it's looking okay out this way, but what we're actually concerned about is that coming from the south. So I'm just going to bring up the bomb. There is a break in the weather, so it's all systems go. Fine with me. Find your traffic sling 8668 is rolling runway 05 circuits, Calandra. Stephen is feeling the pressure. Most students don't know when their solo check will be happening. Stephen's instructor has recommended him for his first solo after their lesson on the weekend, so he has travelled up to the airfield for his solo check. Knowing there is only a small weather window for the check, he needs to be in control of his nerves. I think that the sling as a training aeroplane uh, at the moment is the pick of all the LSA aeroplanes on the market, particularly for training, just because of the way it's built. It's, it's a very solid aeroplane. When you get into the nitty gritty, as, as I do, the main wing spars are laminate aluminium and it is solid as a rock. In my maintenance job, I get to fly pretty much all of them. So I've got a good idea of a cross section of, of all the aircraft, most of the brands and the sling at the moment is the best, I think, this is my personal view, the best light sport aircraft available. It's easy to fly. For students uh, with side-by-side -side seating, you can keep an eye on what they're doing. Um, the controls are really well harmonized. It doesn't have any vices. It's, it's just a very stable, very forgiving airplane. Carriage, mixture, fuel set to our right and our first tank. Engine fire. Landing on. Go 05. 05. Okay. Yep. Leave flaps for the time being. Yeah, flight speed. Find the traffic sling 8668 is turning base runway 05, touching go Calandra. Clear right, clear center, clear above, clear left. The best glide speed in a sling aircraft is 70 knots. Stephen is coming in at 80 knots, which means he is descending too quickly and would not have made the runway. 
Are uh, you in the mate event? Okay. So uh, you held 80 knots all the way down. What's our best glide speed? 70. That's why I didn't make it. Oh, you had a descent rate at 800 feet a minute, not 500 feet a minute. They climb out at 70 knots? Yeah. In the pressure of the moment, he has overlooked his airspeed, which could prove fatal if he was by himself in a real emergency. It's an emergency situation, but you fly the aeroplane. You fly it first and, and worry about anything else after that. So I'm always looking for an out, somewhere to go. If the engine stopped here, where would I go? And I try and instill that into all my students. So by the time I'm ready to send them solo, they've, they know that they can get the aeroplane back on the ground, no matter where it is, and in hopefully one piece, and walk away. Um, so with, I throw emergency things at them all the time. Right, so, not quite solo standard, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Stephen, you agree? Yeah, it was just, yeah, I do. It's just, you look, you're overall pretty good, you're close, but just a little bit sloppy, you're still landing a little bit flat. Yeah, I can. Uh, I think we need to do a session with me, to be honest, and yeah. your engine failures are a bit... Yeah. Uh, just untidy, yeah. is the word. Um, you know, holding best glide speed, I want to sound straight away. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you did twice. You know, yeah. got a nose drop, 80 knots. Yeah. And we wouldn't have, we, were more, we would have, might have made the end of the field just over the fence, but it wouldn't have been pretty. Um, so yeah, just a bit more practice with that. And just working on that hold off just a bit more. Just a little bit more uh, nose, nose up, a little bit more back pressure and would have been perfect. Yeah. Just seeing it land a little bit flat. I'm um, still good, but sorry to disappoint you. No, it's okay. Like, can Compared to when I flew here last, you know, you're light years ahead of where you were. Yeah. So, you know. Just checking um, Jessica's flight planning. So she's done a very good job here. She's been very well prepared and done all the flight planning before she's arrived today. But I'm just making sure there's no mistakes. Better to check now on the ground before we, before we get in the air. Once a student obtains their pilot certificate, the next major endorsement is navigation. Mount Kuroi back to Ewan Matic Reservoir. This allows the student to fly outside of the training area. You got 103? Yeah. <coughs> Jess is planning her navigation flight. She must work out how much fuel it will require, the correct headings and height she will fly to ensure a safe flight. Is it out? Uh, quite out, yes. yes. So it looks like about 170 to me. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I reckon that's right. Oh, maybe a little bit strange, but that's right. A small error with a heading can put the pilot out by miles at the end of the leg, or worse, find themselves in an unfamiliar area. I love the, uh, the travel aspect to it and being in all these different places, not at the same time, but being able to be in one place in one day and another place in the other day, the next day, it just, it's incredible. What other job gets to basically look out a window and admire the beautiful scenery that we have in the world and travel as well. So you get your time that you departed? Yep, 3-0. Yep, write that down. Yep, always write it down because you'll forget. I usually have the map off that. Just have the map stand by your side because you're going to need to hold your map up at times. Okay. So I'll look for control for a sec. Yep. Can you get one of those clicky pads? Yeah. Stuck yeah. yeah. your map beside you. Yep, yep. or wherever. And um, and then you've got that pad free to write that stuff down. Okay. Good. Being organised in the cockpit is essential when navigating. So it it down, feeds into the many processes that make up navigation and allows the pilot to fly ahead of the aircraft at all times. Uh, it's a lot to take in. Do I, do I, like everything with aviation, it is all about layers of knowledge. Okay, so where are we now? Uh, we're at Euron Matic Dam, so we're going to head in. Yep. I want you to use this today. Yeah. Not the other one. Just get used to flying by compass. Yeah. Oh, I don't think our wind's doing what it's meant to do okay. at the moment, so we've probably got too much crab on. Okay. So just be mindful, look visually, look on the map, where are you going to now? Uh, to Mount Croy. Where's Mount Croy in front yeah. of you? 
Yeah, so you can see when we're getting close to controlled airspace, we need to be really good. Keep a good look out visually of where we are in relation to the controlled airspace step. Now here we look at it, we're basically east of the Bruce Highway is where our Sunshine airspace is. So looking at that, we've got too much crab on, we're going to end up maybe punching through the controlled airspace. So yeah. we can see Mount Kuroi. I would just be pretty much pointing towards Mount Kuroi. Okay. I can't feel much drift up here, so the wind's obviously not forecast <laughs> as strong as it, it's meant to be, or as more of a headwind. Yeah. So yeah, just don't always trust your heading, and so every time you do a, a turn, uh, or you're at a waypoint, uh, do your clear off checks, so orientation's number one. Yep. Alright, yeah. so we got clear off, so we got compass. Yep. Which, we're not going to, we've got to adjust it yes. because of the wind. Yep. Um, log got 30, or we got there at 33, so yep. write that down. And then do your estimate for Kuroi at the ETI? Uh, should be, is, oh my gosh, 50, sorry, 46. Yep. Sorry that. Um, attitude, we're still going to we'll climb two, 200 feet. Yep. And radio, we should be changing over to 124.6. Yep. Yep, now you can start using power if you get a bit sync. Keep lowering that nose here close to the ground, there's a lot of wind gradient today. A bit more power, you feel that sync. Yep, you can rudder on the centre line. More power, more power, more power, lots of sync. Lower your nose. Yep, use that rudder, stay in the middle. Yep. Jess and Damien are experiencing a moderate crosswind as they come in to land at Harvey Bay, which is making the landing a challenge. Harvey Bay is also a wider and longer runway, which can affect the pilot's perception and height at which they flare the aircraft. Power up. Get airborne. Always play high when it's a big, low, right, wide runway because it's deceiving. You think you're lower than you are. Okay. I would love to become a commercial pilot and go through the avenue of getting a cadet program with Rex. It's very, extremely intense, but it enables me to get into the aviation industry as a qualified pilot, and it it helps me so much to get all my hours up and everything.